Hi. <laughs> I feel like they've covered everything already. <laughs> it's just a very thorough. Um, I thought I would talk to you all about something a little bit different. Um, and that is my perspective working as an artist, um, also working with large companies and also working with independent artists. Um, I think it's quite overwhelming to hear all about this when you realize you've actually got no money. Um, and I think there's some practical things that we can talk about um, and also set expectations. Um, but first, I work in the arts because I love it. Um, I originally trained as a dancer, uh, which feels like many moons ago, but we won't talk about when. Um, I then decided that actually I wanted to use my other passion and that was graphic design. And it started off with graphic design and built into something that I probably never knew at the time that it was going to be like this. Um, I also realized that there was not a lot of money in dance um, and I wanted a backup plan um, and I got sucked into digital. Um, we've, we've heard about online media and digital marketing. I started out literally updating web pages. Um, and now I'm at the other end where I manage teams and we do content strategy, um, look at social media, live streaming. Um, I've recently done, which you might have seen, a plug, Glastonbury with English National Ballet and we streamed it on TV. Um, so this, the breadth of my job has changed quite a lot. Um, and I think that's not necessarily about what I'm into. It's also about the way the industry's changing quite dramatically. Um, so for me, what is digital marketing? For me, digital marketing is when technology is used to connect with audiences, however that may be. That might be through a website, um, email marketing, CRM, content. It's quite extensive. Um, I wanted to talk about potentially what you can do right now, which isn't gonna cost you loads of money. Um, I wonder if you could put your hands up if you are independent artists and organizations, medium. Large? No. Small. <laughs> okay. I was so I think we can all agree that there's not enough resource, there's not enough time, and um, particularly money. Um, I want to talk about that. So social media, first of all, is that you need to make it personable. Um, I think I've made the mistake in the last nine, ten years that it, you quite get to the point where you are just churning stuff out. Um, I think that's a lesson that everybody learns very quickly is that it can't be passive. Um, and I think we've all, we've all said that already. Um, it needs to be engaging and it needs to be relevant. Um, but also don't expect that it needs to be a TV commercial standard like Nike. People want content on YouTube to be gritty. Um, if it's an advertisement specifically for cinema, then you can spend quite a lot of money on it, of course. But actually, people like this behind the scenes access to whatever you're doing. And I would say the most successful content that I produce is when it is not high end. Um, that is literally whipping a phone out in a studio, capturing dance, taking a picture in the costume department, um, letting the dancers do it themselves. Um, you all have access to this amazing content, which we've all spoken about already. Um, and I think it's just about utilizing it. I think having a process does help. There is so much going on. You're trying to wear <laughs> 25 hats, um, but actually you need to decide what, what is your priority beyond the stage. Um, I also would advise that you ask people to help you. There's a lot of people that want experience. Um, interns, I think a good channel is through Dance UK. They, they will be able to help find people to work with you. Um, and also other companies and other artists, they may well not be able to offer you any financial support, but they may be able to recommend someone that has worked with them um, on a campaign, whether that's an email marketing campaign, right, right the way through to um, filming. Um, I know that's a big question, which I get asked a lot is about how do you film something very well? There's lots of contact, contracts out there and I think you should utilize them. Um, this is gonna sound quite harsh, but I also don't think there's any excuse for anyone not to have any digital presence. Um, there's a lot of tools for free. If you have no website, get yourself on WordPress. You can get a free account. You could use Tumblr. Um, all them things said and done, I would also say, 
don't try and use everything. Um, I know lots of scenarios where people decide, okay, we're going to do something. We're going to have a Twitter account. We're going to have an Instagram, YouTube, a, have a blog. You just can't keep up with it. You have to be realistic about what it is and about the quality of content that you put out. Um, I would echo once again that it is about knowing who you're trying to, to market your product to. Um, you're not going to know in as much detail as I would know at English National Ballet because we have very deep segmentation. But I think you can take a calculated guess on who that might be. Um, try and make sure that you create content that can be seeded to different types of audience. Um, and you'll also learn if you watch what is happening. Um, don't just think you can put a video up and that is going to solve all your problems. You need to be there. You need to be looking. See who's retweeting your content. Um, we've already had a little example of uh, Kenneth from The Place, his profile. I encourage you, if people retweet you, go and check out who they are. Um, you'll be surprised who actually does it. And then you can be like, oh, you like my content? So now you're going to help me spread that word even deeper. Um, there is obviously a right way and a wrong way to do things. Um, but everyone's quite mature and pretty good communicators. So ask nicely for people to share your content. Um, if it is Kenneth, I'm sure he's going to do it for you anyway. Um, but people like me and Natasha, you know, look at people's profiles and see how you can utilize them to your best advantage. Um, I think that I've already touched on it already that it doesn't have to be expensive. The content is there. It normally is about the time. Um, I also think the amount, um, everybody hears it, it's about the quality, not the quantity. Um, a schedule is a very good way of making sure that you are not tweeting 65 times a day for the sake of tweeting. Um, if you use a tool called Hootsuite, they can do a auto-publishing um, activity for you. It will let you schedule it on a calendar as well as track that activity. There's plenty of other good products out there, but that's the one that I use. Um, and also a normal diary, just to know when things are clashing. Um, one of the things that I've learned with there's so much going on in <clears throat> the dance sector that you need to know what everybody else is doing too. Get on their websites, check their what's on calendar. Yes, we're at SAD as well, but I watch SAD as well as like a hawk. I need to know what they're doing and when they're doing it. I watch the Royal Ballet, I watch Birmingham Royal Ballet. It is not appropriate for you to go and launch your, you know, for the New Movement Collective did this massive project. It would have been very silly of them to go and launch their whole thing when the Royal are going to do their thing. You need to take calculated risks and you need to know when they're, when, you know, they're going to be the highest season time, September. Um, so I think just keep an eye out for them kind of things. One of the things that I also think is important is that you allow, if you work for organisations, um, whether this is for dancers or curators or teachers or lecturers, give them the power to communicate to. Um, I think you find that audiences will engage with them quite well. Um, don't I know it's quite scary to let an archivist write a blog post or the curator talk directly, but actually it makes it more personable to people. And um, one of the things that I found is a challenge is that I have, I think EMB have about 70 dancers. That's a lot of dancers to be blogging and doing stuff. So controlling it is very difficult. And that's a whole different situation. But actually utilize them um, to create content for you, um, as well as your audiences. I think I was at a talk recently where, um, and I'm going to tell you this because I thought it was good, the Tate, um, allowed one of their curators to have a one-to-one -one interaction with the audience. They wrote the email newsletter that went out. They received the responses. They had someone to help them filter questions. Um, but they also made it about them, that their perspective on what they do is very unique. Um, I know what I do, and I can't talk for everybody. So I would suggest you utilize that as best you can. Um, I think for independent artists, use your collaborators too whether that is someone that is helping you write a press release, do your marketing image, uh, record of deter, I think utilise people that are around you. Um, and it isn't about throwing money at everything. It doesn't always work. Obviously, I'm not going to name names, but it isn't about throwing bucket loads of cash at things. People find that impersonable sometimes. Um, 
I think mine's going to be a bit short on everybody else's, but I think one of the things that I would like to give you as a tip is to think big. Um, I don't think you should be afraid of approaching new people. Um, Natasha's already spoken about everybody wants dance. Everybody wants dance as part of what they do. Um, we've recently done some very successful campaigns with EMB, such as the Lexus campaign. I hope you've all seen it. It's amazing. Um, but actually that is people approaching us. That wasn't us going out. However, there have been situations where we feel like we have a strong brand connection with people and going out there and trying to make things happen. Um, a lot of organisations have a development department to do this, but as individual artists and choreographers, you still have power and interest. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say you're going to go and get Microsoft to sponsor you, but that's not to say they wouldn't be interested in supporting you a different way. Um, so believe in what you do. Um, there is a whole community out there that we all do the same thing um, and think big. So that's kind of my thing.